Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. Make sure you buy 2020 edition. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 863. Some gradient problem beginning with page 863. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at iCloud.com. Alright, let's look at let's take a look at number 16. In number 16 we are told that a raised to b over 4 is equal to 16. We are further told that both a and b must be positive. The question simply is what is one possible value of b? One possible value. There are several of them. We'll find out how many there are in a second. For example, for example, a raised to b over 4 is 16, we can have 2 raised to 4, that's 16, we can have 4 raised to 2, that's 16, or we can simply have 16 raised to 1, and that's 16. And all of those will do the job nicely. In this case, a raised to 4, in this case, uh, rather b raised to 4, we have a equal to 2, and b would be, since, since it's 4, we need b to be 16. 16 over 4 will give us 4. So here the b is equal to 16. Here a is equal to 4, and we need the exponents to be 2. It's b over 4, so b needs to be 8. Here a is equal to 16, and b would have to be, since it's b over 4, and b over 4 needs to be 16, Oh, sorry, b over 4 needs to be 1, b has to be 4. For example here, 16 raised to 4 over 4 will do the job nicely. 4 over 4 gives you 1 and that's 16, in which case a is equal to, you get the idea. So there are, there are several possibilities in the exam. You don't want to waste your time trying to figure out all the possibilities or even more than one, even, even two would be a waste of time. As long as you can figure out one, that's all you need here. So if you grade in any one of these will do fine. There are two more possibilities, which I don't know if I want to go through it. For example, you can have uh, you can have b b raised to two, or b could be two. In which case, let's take care of two more since I brought them up. So that's we are done with all of this thing. If b is equal to two, two over four is half. In which case, a would be. So we're looking for some number whose square root is 16. A would be 256. And a third possibility is 256 times 256, and so on and so forth. Number two. When they ask you for one, possi one possible answer, find the one possible answer and move on with your life. Here, of course, we're not taking the exam, so we go in a little bit more detail because we're learning. We are here for learning purposes. The next one is very simple. We are told two thirds of t is equal to five halves. The question simply is, how much is t? Well, that's very straightforward. If you just want to find the t, multiply both sides. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this, this fraction, 3 over 2. And that should do it. This, this 3 over 2 cancels out with 2 thirds, which was the whole point. And t is equal to this quantity right here, which is 5 times 3 is 15. And 2 times 2 is 4. That's all. Let's do the next one. Number 18. Number 18 is on the it's a geometry problem. We have a right angle triangle here. A, B, C, D, and E. And we are told that uh, this is 8 and this is 6. 
Kort en simpel is. How long this guy? CE. What's the length of CE? And of course they tell you the BD is parallel to AE. Of course they will have to be parallel because otherwise nothing will happen. So if this guy is parallel to this guy and since we are told that this is right angle that's their way of saying that this is also right angle. Of course that's right angle. That's the only way that's the only way the story is going to go anywhere because what we have here is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. This is 3 times 2, this is 4 times 2, this is 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. You have to be able to recognize the 3, 4, 5 triangle when you see one. 3, 4, 5, except it's a multiple of 2. 3 times 2, 4 times 2, 5 times 2. This is 10. The question is how much is CE? They must tell us something else. Yes, very good. But something else that they tell us is this part, which was, which was a very important bit of information because otherwise the story cannot develop. So, here we go. So, very quickly now we're going to go through them. We're talking about triangle ACE and triangle DBC. Those are the two triangles we are comparing. So listen carefully. In these two triangles that I just mentioned, they share this angle. This angle is shared. This angle is shared. This angle is 90 because this line is parallel to that line. If this is 90, this is 90. So these two angles are equal. And since these two lines are parallel, this line right here, DB, is parallel to EA. If these two lines are parallel, and if you draw another line like this, this angle is going to be equal to that angle. And that's this angle. This angle has to be equal to that angle. So one more time. This angle is of course is shared by the both triangles. This angle is equal to that angle because we are told that this line is parallel and this is 90. If this is 90, this is 90. And this angle would have to be equal to that angle because these two lines are parallel. What we conclude here is that the three angles in the small triangles are exactly the same as the three angles in the large triangles which make these two triangles what is known as similar triangle. In the similar triangles, lines are proportionals. If this side, for example, is 6 and this is 18, which means that this bigger triangle is 3 times this triangle, because this side is 3 times this side. If this bigger side is 3 times this side, then all the sides are 3 times as large. That's all we need here. We already know that C to D is 10. If C to D is 10, then this missing side that we're looking for would have to be 30. 10 times 3. That's all. And if somebody were to ask us, we are not being asked, but somebody were to ask us how much is A to C, well A to C would be, since I brought it up, A to C, even though we are not being asked, A to C, this is 8, so it's just 8 times 3. This is 6 times 3, and this is 10 times 3. There we go. 6, 8, and 10. You see, 6, 8, and 10. Except it's 3 times as much. That was number 18. Number 19. Number 19 says, how many liter of, I'm not going to write, I'm not going to write all of these things. We're going to mix, we're done with this thing, so I'm going to erase it. We're going to mix 25% uh, solution with 10% solution. They go on to tell us that they have saline solution. We really don't care uh, what it is that what concentration we're measuring. We could be measuring saline, or we could be measuring something else. This is 25% strong. This is 10% strong. That's all we need to know. We are further told that this is three liters. The question is, how much of this? How many liter of this do we need to mix with this guy, so that what we end up at the end is a solution that is only 15% strong. That's all. That's fine now, shall we? Okay. So this is this is 25% strong, and let's say that we have. Let's let's say that we mix x liters. If we mix x liter, and since this is 25% strong, saline or you know what, 25% is one quarter of it. So if we take x liter of it, one quarter of that liter, which is 25%, is the actual saline. So that's this part. Here we have 10%. 10% is simply one tenth. 
So if you take 3 liters, only one tenth of that is saline. Only one tenth of that is saline. So this, this 10 represents 10%, one tenth, and this one quarter represents 25%. That's it, we're done. And this is 15%. 15 percent I'm going to write as 15 percent. 15 percent. The question is 15 percent of what? Well 15 percent of what we started out with which is x liter of this guy and 3 liter of this guy. That's, that's the very simple equation that we have to work on. So work on we shall. All right? First thing we notice here is that we have a different denominators here. We have a 4, a 10, and a 100. Why don't we make it why don't we make the denominator common so that we don't have to worry about the denominator? If they have a common denominator, we can just ignore it. So this is 10. How do we convert this 10 into 100? Well, very simple. Take this guy, multiply top and bottom by 10. We haven't changed anything because 10 over 10 is just 1. Similarly, this guy has the denominator of 4. We want it 100. Take the guy and multiply top and bottom by 25. There we go. Now, now they all have the denominator of 100, and since they all have the deno same denominator, since they have a common denominator, the denominator of 100 ceases to play any role. It has no significance. Since it ceases to play a role, we can just ignore the bloody thing. It is of no value to us. What we're dealing with here now is this guy. 25x, 25x, plus 3 times 10 which is 30 and this is where we have to slow down we have 15 times x which is 15x and 15 times 3 which is 45 like I said this is where we have to slow down let's bring the 15x here 25x minus 15x is going to give us 10x and let's bring the 30 to that side 45 minus 30 would be 15 and therefore x is equal to 15 over 10 and we reduce top and bottom by divide top and bottom by 5 and that tells us that x is equal to 3 halves if you like you can grid, the, grid, the, grid it in as a fraction as 3 halves 3 over 2 or if you wish you can, can, you can grid it in as 1.5 I myself prefer not to waste my time doing it 1.5 why do 1 and a point decimal it's just a 3 slash 2, that's all. 3 halves is the answer. That was number 19. Let's do number 20, shall we? Number 20 says, point A and B lie on a circle. On a circle whose radius is 1. Question is, what fraction of the circumference is the arc AB? What fraction of the circumference of the circle is the length of the arc AB? That's what we what I meant to say. I'm not writing it down. What fraction of the circumference is the length of the arc AB? So let's draw the circle, shall we? Let's draw the circle. Makes it easier to see. So here's our circle. Let's just let's just pick two points A and B, it doesn't matter where. And let's let's just pick an angle, let's pretend that this is X degrees. If we can figure out if we can somehow figure out what the degree is, what's the value of x, what, what angle do they form, what angle does this arc form, what degree, then we can figure out what fraction of circumference is this arc. This arc is what we are interested in. Right here, this is what we are interested in. The length of this arc is a fraction of the circumference. For example, if this x happens to be 180 and since circle is 360, then we know the arc is half of the circle. If this happens to be uh, 30 degrees, then we know it's one twentieth of the circle, and so on and so forth. Let's find out what that is, okay? We know that the radius is 1. Radius is 1, which means circumference is equal to 
2 pi r, which is simply 2 times pi times r, which is just 2 pi. And we will use this thing. We must, we must have been given something else. Ah, oh, we left out something very important. The length of this AB, the length of this arc AB, of course we need that, is pi over 3. There we go. Now we are in business. And we know the whole circle is 2 pi. The whole circle is 2 pi. This is pi over 3. Set it up as a proportion. So it is with a proportion of degree and length. We know the whole circle is 360 degrees and 360 degrees is the length of 2 pi because that's the length of the circumference. The question here is how many degrees is this angle, x, how many degrees is, this is 360 degrees, this is x degrees, how many degrees is x if it is pi over 3. That's all. Let's solve for it, shall we? So x is just going to be, x is simply going to be, bring the pi over 3 up there. So it's 360 times pi over 3 over 2 pi is what we're dealing with. Okay, stay with me in this story. As you can see, this pi is going to, this pi is going to drop out and this 3 actually can be brought down. It, it comes down. That's all. We're almost done. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 is going to go away. It becomes 1 and 2. 120 over 2, which is 60. I think I made it far too complicated. There has to be an easier way. It's 60 degrees. And since the whole circle is 360, since the whole circle is 360 degrees, and this thing is 60 degrees, question what, what fraction of the circle is this arc part? This arc AB, the answer is it is one sixth. It represents one sixth of the circle. One sixth of the circle. Of course, it represents one sixth. I don't know why I made it so complicated. You see, this is pi over 3. This is pi over 3, which means if the circumference of the circle had been pi, which is, which is not, but let's just say hypothetically, if, if the circumference of the whole circle were pi, then this would have been one third of it because it's pi over 3. But the circumference of the circle is not pi, it is 2 pi. So this, this arc is not one third of the circle, it's one sixth. That's what it is. I don't know why I made it so complicated. That was the end of that uh, show. I'll see you tomorrow where we'll begin the next section, section number 4. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, as I said before, you can reach me at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Just send me an email, okay? Bye now.